A lot of people suggested this in the comments, so here is how to edit like monkey photo using the wheel Lightroom. As always, feel free to follow along with this video by downloading the raw file from the link in the description. Now, let's begin. If you don't know monkey photo, I would highly suggest checking out his Instagram page since he has an insane collection of beautifully edited bird images. And the theme for his shots is mostly keeping the subject centered while the subject is super sharp in front of a dark blue, very smooth blurred background. I'm going to choose this shot because we have a very sharp subject and we do have some background to play around with. In this case, the background is super bright, but we can manipulate it using a bit of masking to make it look darker and give it a more blue color cast. First, as always, we want to go through the basic adjustments, trying to get the exposure right to then apply the masking on. So let's open up the masking panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, which helps to lessen the contrast. And in turn, we have a little more control of it. Before working on the white balance, which is very, very important to get close to the monkey photo look, I want to work on the exposure. At the moment, this shot is super bright. So I want to counter that by bringing down the exposure. And as we do that, we, we are going to reveal more details in the background. Also, we are revealing more details in the bird itself. We do make its face a little darker as well, but, but again, we can fix stuff like that with a bit of masking later on. I also want to bring down the shadows a lot. I'm going to drop them all the way down. That's something I personally don't do often for my images. But when I take a look at his images, he's clearly working with very, very deep, dark colors. So dropping the shadows will bring us closer to his style. For the same effect, I want to drop the blacks just a little bit. And I also want to increase the contrast. So that's a reason for me to bring up the highlights. Now, bringing up the highlights will affect the background, but it will also affect the highlights of the bird right here. And that's exactly what I'm aiming for. For the same effect, I want to slightly raise the whites just around here. And at this point, the basic exposure looks quite good. So from here on, we can now work on the white balance. Monkey Photos images are, as I said, more on the cold blue side of things. However, this does not mean we need to turn down the temperature of the white balance. I do want to have a rather neutral image, so I'm actually going to bring it up a notch like this. And we still have some blue tones, but they don't look as good as they should at the moment. Again, that is something we will fix later on in the editing process. For now, I also want this image to be very, very sharp and clear. So I'm going to bring up the texture. I'm also going to bring up the clarity. And I'm even going to bring up the dehaze just a little bit, which helps to add more contrast. And now, something I very, very rarely do, I'm going to bring down the vibrance a lot. This will desaturate the image, but this will help us with the color grading later on. Okay, so I think it's time to compare the image to before. You can see it's much, much darker. And from this point on, we can work on targeted local adjustments. So we want to head into the masking panel and there will be a ton of masking involved. I guess let's start with something simple. I'm going to create a new subject mask. For this image, it works quite well. We do miss a little bit of the feathers right here. So with the bird selected, let's bring up the exposure. Very, very careful here. We don't want to lose too much contrast. I'm also going to bring up the whites, targeting those brighter areas of the bird. And I'm going to further increase the texture, giving those feathers more detail, which works great with the texture slider. I'm also going to introduce more clarity. Wonderful. Next up, I want to counter the problem of this dark face. I'm going to choose a radial gradient for that. I'll be, I'll be covering the bird's head like this. And I just want to affect the bird. So I'm going to click on those three dots and choose intersect mask with and choose subject. This will give us a proper selection. On in this one, I want to bring up the highlights. I want to bring up the whites. 
And since we're working with a lot of dark tones here, I'm going to bring up the shadows as well. Just a little bit to get more detail out of its head. And I think we can even add a bit of clarity here. This really makes the head pop. I really love this effect. Okay, now it's time to select the background. And I did struggle a lot with this, mainly because of those feathers right here. So again, this will be far from perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say select subject. Now this mask is not very precise. To make it more precise, I'm going to hit the three dots, go to intersect mask with, and again, choose select subject. This gives us a more precise mask around those hairy top parts of the bird. Now, next up, I'm going to again click on those three dots and we want to invert this mask. This gives us a rough background selection. However, you can see this area might be problematic and the bottom part of the bird isn't selected as well. So next up, again, I want to click on those three dots, go to intersect mask with, and this time I'm choosing a color range mask. With the color range mask active, I'm clicking right here in the blue part of the background, which will give us a more precise background mask. You can see it right here in this area. However, we did lose a few parts which I want to add back on. So let's click on the mask, choose add and choose brush. And with the brush, I'm just going to brush over a few areas which got deselected. Right here, we will end up with an ugly looking edge. Unfortunately, I have not figured out how we can more clearly fix that. I could use the brush to paint over like this, but I think it looks better with an ugly edge like that. Okay, now that we have set up the background mask, what we want to do with the background, we want to separate the subject from the background by making the background darker, just like in the reference images of Monkey Photo. Let's bring down the exposure to start things. I'm also going to drop the temperature, making the background colder this way. And at this point, we do have too much saturation going on in the background, so I'm going to bring down the saturation slider a bit. And I also want to make the background softer. So I'm going down to the texture slider, which I'm going to drop. And I'm also going to drop the clarity a lot. Now, it would be much better to have a proper high quality telephoto lens, so you would not have to blur the background manually. However, this is not the case for this image, so I need to find a way to still get a buttery smooth background. Again, that's far from perfect. Now, I want to target the background in another way. Instead of cre recreating this mask, I'm going to right click and choose Duplicate Mask Free. Of course, we need to reset those settings because I don't want to have the same on it as well. So let's just do that real quick. And what I want to do with this mask, I want to further adjust this by subtracting a linear gradient coming down from the top. So we mainly affect the bottom part of the background. And what I want to do with that is to bring down the exposure a lot. So just like this. And right here, you can see the problematic area again around those feathers. We could try tweaking it using the color range mask and adjusting the refine slider here, giving it a little more room to work with and thus just selecting more of these feathers. Okay, now the bottom part looks good for now. I also wanna work on the right side. I'm going to create a linear gradient covering quite a lot of the right side. I don't want to affect the bird, so I'm going to say subtract and choose select subject. This I think works quite well. And what I want to do in here again is to bring down the exposure. Just a little bit. I'm working with tiny increments, making it darker step by step and just kind of carefully working my way towards the desired look. So I'm using another linear gradient covering all of the bottom of the image, including the subject. I want to drop the exposure very, very carefully. And then let's use another linear gradient coming in from the left. Again, I don't want to affect the subject, so I'm going to say subject, select subject. Okay, looks good. Going to drop the exposure. 
I want to make it quite dark on this side. And again, I'm also going to bring down the texture and the clarity to get a smoother background. Okay. I do think I want to add some light coming in from the top because this area is something we can't really make darker without making it look weird because of those feathers. So instead of making it darker, we are going to add a very subtle light effect coming in. I'm going to use a radial gradient. I'm going to make it rather thin and very, very long. So just like this. And again, we don't want to affect the subject. So go to subject and choose select subject. And in here, what we want to do is simply raise the blacks. This will add some highlights to this area, which works quite nice. Now, I would say we are halfway through the masks. Let's continue again. I'm going to create a linear gradient for the right side, which I think needs to be darker. So something like this, maybe again, I'm choosing subject, subject, and I want to quite dramatically bring down the exposure. I also want to bring down the blacks and let's bring down the temperature, adding more blue right in this corner. Again, the saturation starts to become a problem. So I'm going to bring down the saturation slider like this, and that looks pretty good. Then let's use another linear gradient coming up from the bottom right because this area right now looks very very unnatural as bright as it is right now so again i just want to make it darker by bringing down the exposure let's bring down the shadows and let's also drop the blacks okay that looks cool i do think we can make this area of the bird brighter so i'm setting up a radial gradient covering just this part right around here. And I'm going to intersect this mask with the subject mask so we don't accidentally affect the background. To make it brighter, I'm going to bring up the highlights and I'm also going to bring up the whites. This helps to add a little bit of contrast, further separating the bird from the background. Okay, now I think I wanna work on the bottom again using a linear gradient going up like this, and I'm going to subject a radial gradient, pretty much covering the most important parts of the subject. Okay, let's bring down the exposure. That looks good. I'm also going to bring down the temperature again. And I actually think I wanna bring down the texture and the clarity. Okay, so this will make parts of this bird a little more blurry. I think as long as it's not the head, it's okay. In fact, it, I think it looks quite good. What we can do is bring down on this linear gradient a bit, however, to not affect too much of the bird. Okay, let's, let me create a radial gradient covering the bird's neck because I think this spot could use some more brightness. I'm going to increase the highlights for that. And let me also increase the whites. Okay, I think we're almost done. Just one more mask and I'm again using a linear gradient covering everything on the right side, including the subject. And I wanna make it darker again by bringing down the exposure. As you can see, there are a ton of masks applied and we can take a look at before and after. Now with the contrast and everything set up, we can now start to work a little bit on the colors. Let's head into the color mixer. And first I want to work on the blue tones. So the blue tones in his images tend to go more into the cyan color range. To achieve that, we can make use of the blue hue slider in the HSL settings and just slightly bring it to the left. And you can see how we are clearly getting closer to the desired color style. So let me drop it a little more like this. At this point, I do think the saturation might be a little bit too much. So let's head into the saturation menu and I want to bring down the blue saturation a notch, just like this. I also want to bring down orange and yellow just to keep that bird clear and white. So next up, we can also head into the luminance tab and just play around with the blue luminance. 
this will affect the background so you could make it darker or brighter. I want to make it a little bit brighter. So just like this looks great to me. Okay, now a little more color grading with some split toning. Let's start with the shadows. And what we want to do here is obviously we want to keep the blue tones. So I'm going to set up a blue hue for the shadows and very carefully bring up the saturation here. We could also add a bit more contrast by bringing down the shadows luminance just a tiny bit. And then let's skip over to the midtones. Again, I want to keep the blue color tones. So let's add up a cold hue and carefully raise the saturation. So I also want to work on the highlights. And here I'm not really sure. I'm going with a warm hue, but I could be wrong here. Still, let's set up the hue to something like this and very gently raise the saturation again. All right. And some final color grading in the calibration tab. Here, the most important slider would be the blue primary hue. Bringing it down, you can see we can change the color of the background quite heavily. And this is something you can use to get really, really close to his color tones. So I want to bring it down like this and maybe push the saturation a bit. Okay, let's also bring up the red and blue and green saturation just like that. All right, I think color wise, this looks quite nice. Might not be 100% the right color tone, but it's really, really close, I think. Again, for the background, what we can do as well to get it softer and a little more realistic, we could use the lens blur feature. This effect will take a while to render, but I think it works quite nice on this scene. You can see it makes these feathers a little more blurry, which in this case is great since the masking had a very, very bad effect on these. So I want to keep the lens blur like this. I did increase the amount slightly to get a more smooth background. And with that out of the way, what we can do is we can also sharpen this image, of course, in the details tab. So I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking. So we really only want the subject to get sharpened like this. And then let's pump up the amount of sharpening. I'm gonna go really crazy here because his images are always super, super sharp. So I think this looks great. Now I did shoot this image at a quite high ISO with over 12,000. So we might want to apply the AI noise reduction. I should have done this in the beginning, but I guess I can just cut away all the rendering time. So what I want to do next is I want to apply the AI noise reduction by clicking on denoise. Okay, generating the preview already took a few minutes. You can see estimated time 15 seconds. That's just wrong. This is going to take like 10 minutes or something. Anyway, I'm not changing anything here. Maybe even bring down the amount a little bit back to 50. And now let's hit enhance. One eternity later. Okay, and here we have it. So that's my approach of editing like monkey photo. Again, let me just point out that this base image was not really perfect for this purpose. However, I don't have much bird photos. So for the purpose of recreating his color grading and editing style, I think this worked quite well. If you have any tips or questions about this editing process, let me know in the comments. And maybe you have some bird images to share as well with this editing style. So thank you very much for watching this video and see you guys next time.